on this edition of I have no idea what I'm doing, I thought I would try my hand at restoring this gorgeous old coat. I inherited it from my grandmother who's had to resize and it is this really really thick red and green herringbone but <laughs> it isn't just a really really uh, thick red and green herringbone it's also a sort of double fabric like it's this houndstooth in red tones inside and I've tried to separate these to see if they were just interlined but they seem to be felted together into this really really thick felted wool so really good for winter coats um, it has a couple of things that I need to do with it chiefly it is a little bit too small for me so I have to address that luckily this being a well-made tailored garment from I think either the 50s or 60s it doesn't have any shoulder pads so I don't think 70s but it is also double-breasted with extra buttons so it shouldn't be from the 40s and rationing um, but yeah it's a little bit too small for me but again this being well made it has in both sides seems it has a little bit of extra fabric so I thought I would um, open up the lining all the way up into the armhole and widen out those seams on both sides and see if that is enough then of course I also have to add a little bit of a gusset into the armhole and um, while there technically is enough fabric on the inside of the coat that I could take a piece I don't want to do anything irreversible to the coat so I think instead I'm gonna use this dark green wool that I have left over from the piping of the Luca. It is not quite the same but I think it will be um, subtle enough that it'll be all right and it's only going to be a small piece anyway. If it is not big enough after I widen out the side seams I thought I could use this as a hello as an extra side piece and then I could add into the sleeve as well to make it an effect and I could interline this with a different wool to make it a little bit thicker because this is very thin like this is a normal thin felted wool and it's nowhere near the weight of this wool so I would have to interline it with something to make it have a little bit of the same feeling of the and the weight of this coating wool and of course there's some general like repairing lining that's ripped out there's the sleeve here it's coming out a bit and needs some TLC a lot of the buttonholes have wear marks and could easy, you really use a touch-up same with the cuffs you can see the houndstooth peeking through and it would be nice if they had a more no even look so I went ahead and I got some wool to uh, repair it with or like do some visible mending and <laughs> I wasn't sure which one would fit the most I thought the green would be more subtle because it's calmer but the red would be more striking and maybe more engaging so I did a little Instagram poll and there was a landslide in favor of the red so let's go with that and see how that goes so that'll be fun but I mean just oh, just look at this coat and the beautiful tailoring in it like in the front lapels if we look under the lining which is a loose lining so it's really easy to have a look at the insides you know there's canvas but pieced canvas to make sure that it has that really nice flat look at the front and at the back oh it's really heavy it has these really long flared seams that turn into this really really nice coat so let's start with opening up the side seams and have a look at what we've got Thank you. 
look! Oh, I'm making so many fun discoveries with this coat. Like when I was inspecting it under the floating lining initially, I did see that there was a piece, piece of canvas, but I thought that this was it, that they just run the sewing machine over it a couple of times and call it that, that. But no, they've also added this little piece of what feels like lining material in just a different color. So I'm assuming a piece of scrap fabric on the other side to strengthen it just that little bit. So cool. And there's so many pad stitches dotted throughout everything. They're, they're everywhere. And like we saw briefly, and like, well, the pockets are super raw, not finished at all, just raw edges all the way. And while it doesn't have shoulder pads, it does have padding in the edge of the sleeves, just like we're, we've seen in older coats, which is really, really cool. Tailoring fangirling aside, the side seams were stitched up again with minimal seam allowance. Yeah, so I am completely obstructing the mic here, but what I was saying was that this is a lot better, but I still think it's a bit tight. So I'll do some measurements, rip the seams out and add more fabric. I'll add more flair to the skirt of the coat while I'm at it to help make the extra panel look more intentional. To make the side gore, I quite literally took a piece of old wrapping paper, laid the coat on top and traced my side seam onto it. I then took how much width I thought I needed, divided by two for each side gore, and then divided that by two again to make half a pattern piece to be laid over top a folded piece of fabric. Because I am me, I also added a bit extra just to be sure, which turned out to be wholly unnecessary. With the added flare, it turned out that I had made a pattern piece that could just barely be teased out of my small scrap of green fabric, so long as one of the gores was pieced together from what was left over on either side of the first. The amount of luck I had on this project absolutely astounds me, and this was not even the best of it. To interline my green wool, I'm cutting two pieces of this blue tartan. After pressing the gore that had to be pieced, I include the blue interlining layer and thread mark them both together before making four long rows of pad stitching to encourage them to behave more like one singular piece of fabric. Our side gores are then sewn into the coat with minimal drama since we literally trace the curve directly off the coat. We pick out the thread markings again. And as you might expect, because I am the queen of overestimating, the coat is now way too big. This is no great loss though, as I simply follow up with several rounds of taking in all four seams, trying it on, rinse and repeat. Once satisfied, I can then go back in with my seam ripper and take out the superfluous seams so I can iron the seam allowances flat. And we suddenly have a much better fit. I know it is not good tailoring practice, but I did end up taking a small dart out of the back to make the overall fit better. This ended up being surprisingly fortuitous, as when I went to see how big of a gusset I would have to add to the sleeve to make up for the extra width added by the side gore, the answer was... absolutely none. I am not sure what sewing gods blessed my work from thus, giving us this most auspicious start of the year, but thank you. So I was about to start cutting the lining for the extra little bit of coat that we added. And I mean, this isn't, the side gore isn't all that big. I mean, we managed to get it out of that tiny piece of green fabric. So I thought to myself, I have used a fair bit of this black cotton sateen that you will have seen of the channel already. I wonder if I have enough to just piece together the lining from scraps. And I have this one 
really big piece and then I have a bunch of small pieces. So let's see how this goes. Good morning! It is the next morning and a beautiful morning at that and I set up last night finishing these lining pieces and we did it! We managed to do it with all the scrap pieces that I had. Well, I had this really big one that really helped but it's still something so so satisfying about taking something where you, none of them were big enough on their own but together, excellent! Aforementioned lining pieces were then hemmed before they too were sewn into the coat and I took particular care to stitch further in than on the original to hide old holes. I thought for sure that I would have to stitch at least one of the long lining seams up by hand but with the floating lining as wide as it was I was able to address them all with my hand turned machine. Extra lining in, I then running stitch the top onto the armhole so it stays in place before folding the sleeve lining over top and sewing it in with neat hemming stitches. The sleeve lining is intentionally cut a little longer than the sleeve itself so it neatly folds over the seam allowance of the wool outer layer. This would have been harder with new fabric but this lining just wants to lie this way. And the last stage of our resizing is just to hem the bottom. Single folded with wide hemming stitches just like the original. Now that the coat fits me we can address any additional wear and tear. Starting off with the buttonholes in front which while worn and shredded clearly shows sign of darning and mending more than once. I was originally intending to repair these buttonholes with the same wool I wished to repair the cuffs with but then I thought some strong silk thread might last longer than a loose fluffy wool. I had a look in my stash for the least obtrusive one which incidentally turned out to be the same silk thread I used to tat a thin strip of silk lace for my Victorian cape. While I am redoing the buttonholes, I am also darning any spots looking particularly frayed. I am not aiming for as new. I don't mind showing that my code has history and character. Next up, we are finally getting to the cuffs. I considered covering the cuffs in satin stitches or big buttonhole stitches but in the end I went with tightly spaced feather stitches because I just really enjoy the finished look. Of course we must have a quality inspection of anything wool. And anything beyond the row of feather stitches is covered in satin stitches. Before we end up with one coat fully functional and with wide seam allowances making it possible to make more adjustments in future if necessary. With the very visible mending and adjustments I've done I feel like I have now made the coat my own. At the same time I kept true to my intention of making all my changes reversible. Every stitch I added can be removed again. All original coat fabric can be returned to its original place with no cuts or additional damages and nothing was permanently removed. This coat is also seriously warm to the point where even wearing just a thin shirt underneath still required weather several degrees below freezing to not melt into an overheated puddle.
I hope you enjoyed this little thrifty and, for me, nostalgic adventure and I wish you the best of luck should you wish to try any similar experiments in the future. <laughs>